been Sean Spicer, Senior Advisor for America First Auction Super PAC, Action Super PAC, I'm sorry, and former White House Press Secretary joining us now. Sean, good morning. I know you've been morning, watching guys. on at the uh, pomp and pageantry all morning, and, and we saw the person holding your former position, Sarah Sanders, up in the balcony looking on this morning at the ceremony outside Buckingham Palace. What are you thinking as you see all this play out with the president's official visit there? Well, I, I want to echo something that Bill said earlier. I can't believe uh, it's, it's not a shock, but the first lady looks absolutely stunning and just does a phenomenal job representing our country. Uh, that, that definitely stood out. She is, she is so stunning when you see her in those pictures. But I think the, all the images and all the pomp and circumstance goes back to a phrase that's been uttered over and over again. It reinforces this special relationship that our two countries have. And, and there's a reason that we have these state dinners. There's a reason that they come over uh, to the United States and that there's a reason that President Trump's over there is because this visualization of the special relationship sends a message to the entire world, not just to our two countries, of the alliance that we've built over decades. Uh, well stated, Sean. What do you think can be taken away from this visit? We'll talk about France and Ireland later in the week, but first on the UK, given the circumstances surrounding this visit, all the news that's happening around it with their government. Well, again, I think that there is a lot of domestic issues going on in Britain. This, this whole Brexit issue, this successor to Theresa May, they've got a lot of internal discussions that have to happen. The president's there largely in a ceremonial role to, to reaffirm this uh, relationship that we have, to meet with Her Majesty. Um, but there's a lot of domestic issues that have to be settled within the UK. Um, and we've talked about this. What, what does that trade relationship look like with the UK after they exit the EU? Well, if you don't know who the prime minister is, it makes it very difficult to have a substantial discussion on this. So this is good for relationship building. But until Britain figures out who is going to, to lead it uh, and help chart the course uh, post-Brexit, uh, it's really difficult to have substantial negotiations on matters of, of trade and, and, and other things that, that our two countries are, are so dependent on. The president is certainly doing this visit in his own way, as we mentioned earlier, when he went out uh, to meet with members of the Guard and spoke to them, some of them one-on-one, -on -one, Sean. We're, we are seeing President Trump carry this out in his own way. There's nothing about this presidency that has sort of been the way it's always been. The president has put his mark on the presidency since day one, and he continues to do it, whether he's talking about things that go on at the White House or throughout our country or, or now, as we're seeing overseas. He's definitely got his own style. Um, and, and I think that's, that's who, you know, who he is. And so people continuously are shocked at how it's not like it used to be. But that's how Trump's going to govern. Um, and uh, he's definitely made his mark. Think about the totality of this week and the visits and the stops and the moments that we will all watch here. Sean. You have an opportunity not only to be on the world stage here, but to, um, to appear in such a royal slash presidential moment, first in London, later in Normandy, and third in Ireland. What, what does that do for the presidency when you are seen as this, that this statesman on the world stage and you come back home to the battles that certainly will ensue on the domestic front here? Uh, can you strengthen your hand through images like we were about to see throughout the week here? Yeah, that's a great question because I think overall any president that's traveling overseas gets seen in a, a much bigger light. You get seen as the leader of the free world and, and you are not seen as necessarily getting involved in domestic squabbles that you might if you were still here in the United States. So I think in any presidency, traveling overseas for a state visit elevates the office, elevates how you're seen. What makes it unique under President Trump is he's taking this what would be a normal state visit and, and mixing it in with his America first agenda, making sure that he's using it to talk about issues that he campaigned on that put America back at the forefront of, of a lot of these global issues, uh, particularly when it comes to trade and what he sees as the imbalance of trade with most of these countries in the EU in particular. Uh, so it's, it's sort of twofold for President Trump. One, he gets the bonus of that all presidents would of being overseas and having these pomp and circumstance, stately events, ceremonial events where you're seen with other heads of state. 
But secondly, he adds his own distinct um, flavor to them that reinforces the agenda that he campaigned on. You know, meanwhile, Sean, back at home, Mexico has sent um, their people to discuss with uh, Washington how to proceed with the president's recent uh, warning about tariffs, 5% starting June 10th. I wonder what comes from that, if they're able to work anything out before that begins. Right. Well, Sandra, there's two things that I think are important to, to note here. One is there's a lot of hand-wringing whenever the president talks about instituting tariffs, but you look exactly what happened. The second that he put 5% down, the Mexican delegation came rushing to the United States and saying, we've got to negotiate. So for all of the domestic hand-wringing that I see going on, the president's actually getting them right to the table to address this issue that we have at our southern border. Um, so I, I think you're going to see it happen. And secondly, is that we've learned time and time again that the president means exactly what he says. When he talks about instituting tariffs, when he talks about doing things, he actually follows through. And that's why I think whether it's Mexico or South Korea, when it comes to our trading partners, they recognize that it's not just talk from this president. He's going to act. Mexico is now coming to the table. And my guess is that recognizing the, um, you know, they're our third biggest trading partner, recognizing not just the strategic and economic uh, importance of that relationship, they're going to want uh, to make sure that they find a solution that satisfies the president's needs at the southern border.